Fredo, you win against the family. And for that, <laughs> for that, I must give you one of the greatest quotes ever made in any scene ever. Brandon Cooks, you may have forgotten this when you were drafted by the Saints. This is the business we have chosen. You know Drew Brees and the Saints spread the ball around. You didn't run your mouth when you were sitting there pulling out your little bow and arrow all day long. No, you didn't run your mouth then, did you? Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe you threw fuel on my fire. I cannot take any more of this. Now, should Brandon Cooks be traded? I don't know. I'll say this. If the honey pot is sweet enough, yep, he can go too. Well, I mean, first... I know, Patrick, I said I was going to let you retort, but I, I got to get into this. First, <laughs> yeah, this is good. if that honeypot's sweet, I'll trade anybody. I'll trade Coach Payton. I'll trade Drew Brees. I'll trade the Superdome if we get enough for it. So I'm not saying never trade the guy, and I'm acting like he's our gold nugget. But I, I like how you did one thing. You brought in these these guys that you called young, these Reggie Bushes, these Robert Meachams, Devery Henderson. If I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody out there listening, what did they do that first year together? Oh, yeah, they went to the NFC Championship game. What did they do a couple years later? They won the Super Bowl. Don't try to say because he doesn't get targets for one game. It's not about winning. It is. This team's a losing team. Do you think these players are stupid? Do you think they can't see the win-loss column? Do you think they don't know who they have on their team? They know good and well this is not a playoff team. I don't care what the fans have said, analysts have said, we bloggers have said. This team was not destined for the playoffs. It wasn't happening. And they're smart enough to know that. That doesn't mean they're going to lay down and quit. But the guy knows. Drew Brees knows this team isn't going to the playoffs. Sean Payton might even know by the way he's calling some plays. But it is about winning. Yeah, it came after a blowout win. I get that. Maybe it's just bad timing. And yeah, he's gotten fed all year long. But when a guy is that talented, he deserves to get fed. He does, and I know that's not necessarily maybe team mentality. But when you got a guy, that's like if we had Drew Brees and we decided that he's going to pass seven times a game and we're just going to feed Mark Ingram even if he's averaging two and a half yards a carry. I mean, the, the guy, he's not just a decoy. He's not just Reggie Bush. He's, he's not just Darren Sproles. And those guys were great in their own right in the black and gold. I've got no problem with a guy wanting to be involved. Yes, you're right. I'm not saying that you're wrong, that he's been fed all year, and for him to throw a fit after one game is okay. I've already agreed that that's wrong, and that if he had a problem, that needs to stay in-house. But for us to be, as you say, throwing fuel on the fire, we're not throwing fuel on the fire. You're trying to burn the daggum Super Bowl down because of a young kid who got mad because he didn't get fed. I mean, is it really worth all this vitriol that we're now spewing out at this guy I mean, is it something that we you, – you say it's not about winning, but we'll really be having this conversation on the show tonight if the Saints had 11 wins right now and we look like the Dallas Cowboys head to the Super Bowl? Come on. You redirect, know we wouldn't. Redirect, redirect, Your Honor. Redirect, redirect. It's the truth, yes. and you know, you just don't want to hear yes. it. It's the fact this that the guy – it's mad one time, and you act like we haven't had drama happen in the locker rooms during winning seasons that we just let go. And people at, like, Noel.com would try to talk about it, and we just be like, whatever, we're winning. But we ain't winning right now. Everybody in the world knows it. You can try to cite the fact that we beat the Rams game all you want. We both know it didn't matter to win that game. We've talked about it personally, me and you, on this show for weeks. This team is not going to the playoffs. It's not a winning team. And what does that do? That gets people cranky. It does. The guy's cranky. I'm not saying he's in the right. I'm just saying that it's insane that we're having this big of a fit about it. Okay, we'll get that right. First and foremost, do you, I'm glad you brought up the idea that Reggie Bush and those guys were young and they went to the NFC Championship until they won early. Here's what happened after they won early. They couldn't win again until 2009. They had a 79 and an 8 8 season. They couldn't win. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, Reggie Bush came out and decided that he was going to try to be his big brother all of a sudden and say, you know what? Because Deuce is hurt, I'm going to take the reins. You know where that got him? On the bench. And that is what's going to from Sean Payton right now. I, I made that point early. He's not the same Sean Payton. As well as the minute Reggie decided he was going to poke his chest out after the Super Bowl, after winning, and now he wanted to be the man, you know what happened to Reggie Bush? I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you in a quote. It's been fun, New Orleans. 
he gone. No more Reggie Bush. You know what happened to Kenny Fields when he was just a little too laid back in California, dude? You know what happened to him? He gone. When I, when I know what happened to Jimmy when he got too big for his britches and forgot about the team, and all of a sudden it's all about me because I want to be facing like a wide receiver? He gone. This is not a, this is this is a precedent that has been set. Junior Gillette with Indiana Jones on the beach. He gone. Sean Payton ain't playing it. So for Brandon Cooks to come out after all of that precedent has been set, and for somebody to say he's just frustrated. You know how many people in his locker room are frustrated? A bunch of them. And he's had a hell of a lot more success than Brandon ever had. So for him to come in and want to run his mouth, and if if, if he gets. 12 targets a game, all of a sudden that's going to make the same team that you and I have discussed all season long was not a playoff team. All of a sudden, getting Brandon Cooks the ball 10 to 15 times a game, that's going to make him a playoff team. No, it's not. By the way, last time I checked, the same team I knew, the Sean Payton I watched over the past 10 years, his offense works best when he doesn't have a number one receiver, so to speak. When the ball goes everywhere. So in case Brandon Cooks gets that little memo, Maybe he should sit down and want to receive one. Folks, that's what they did. They had to bring in one of coach and have a little chat with him. When they're bringing in the GOAT in St. Tiffany, a wide receiver, have to sit down and have a talk to the young buck, who shouldn't he be allowed to tie up work? Please. We have had that conversation. That lets me know it's not about team, it's about them. And the all of said this. He trains in the offseason with Antonio Brown. He wants to be like Steve Smith. You will never be that guy in the same offense. You just won't. And if Casey hasn't noticed, I said this on Twitter, Sean Payton finds wide receivers in a trash can. You might want to calm down a little bit before Brandon Cooks becomes former St. Brandon Cooks and a current Cleveland Brown Brandon Cooks. And if he wants that lifestyle, hey, he'll get 20 passes a game. Good luck winning up there. Look. You can come at me with all you want about good luck winning in Cleveland. One, as I'm going to reiterate for the third time now, why are we pretending like this is on the level of Jimmy Graham when he was trying to gouge the Saints for money? Like we're pretending this is on the level of Reggie Bush who was completely disrespectful. This is a guy who wanted to be targeted to catch the ball. The guy's not throwing a fit and and trying to form – Locker room divisions, which is, if anybody remembers, something that has happened multiple times where people tried to make these little clicks that all agreed with each other against coaching staffs. And I'm not saying it was half a team, but there's been a couple of players who were buddy-buddy who aren't even with the team anymore. Let's also quit blowing this into something it's simply not. And one, you acting like Brandon Cooks is not the best receiver that we've had in several years at his position. We've had Colson, but who else have you had? There's a reason that he's got almost 1,200 yards last year and nine touchdowns. There's a reason he's got almost 900 yards with three games to go, averaging 14 yards a catch and six touchdowns. Not many other players are putting up those numbers, even in a Drew Brees, Sean Payton, pick them out the trash can offense. They're not. We've tried that. Those years that we didn't have a lot of talented receivers, what happened? We didn't win a lot of games because they were dropping passes left and right. Come on, let's not undersell the guy just because you're mad at him. Sure, say trade him, say get rid of him, but let's stop trying to take the guy off the elite level because that's what he is. He's better than almost every wide receiver in the NFL at blowing the top off somebody. He's so good at it that Drew Brees routinely underthrows him because the guy's too daggum fast. And unlike Debra Henderson, who you mentioned, who I, I like as well, he's not a one-trick pony. He can run every route on the tree. People think that's common in the NFL, and it's not. Most receivers can run three or four routes really good, maybe one route great. Brandon Cooks can run every single route on the tree. He is invaluable as a wide receiver as that. Now, if this grows into something more, if he comes out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, his agent, the media, whatever, he comes, he goes on Rachel Ray and talks bad about the team, maybe I will join your side. But as long as it becomes something as simple as he wanted to get fed because he didn't get targeted a single time, I'm not going to agree with you. It is ridiculous that we're blowing it to this proportion. He is not trying to start a mutiny. The guy wanted to be part of a win. And maybe he wanted a little bit of that emotional pie because there wasn't a lot of things this year for the Saints to cling on to as a great day. 
maybe he wanted to be a little bit more part of it. And, yeah, I'm not saying he wasn't selfish. I said it last week that a guy like Mark Ingram needs to be the guy that he looks to because Mark Ingram sat three years behind Pierre Thomas and didn't really get to do a thing. And because of it, the Saints fans just sitting there blasting Mark Ingram like he's a bust and we should get rid of him. He didn't talk bad to the fans. He didn't leak anything to the locker room. And that's how you should do it. We're in agreement there. But one little comment, one little thing to me does not warrant this amount of ridiculous coverage, ridiculous discussion, and belittling the guy. I'm sorry it's not worth it. Before you retort, Patrick deserves to say something, and we can just collect our notes and go at it again. Patrick can't save you now. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know how to respond to this. This is good. Oh. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean maybe it's a little butt hurt because Michael Thomason took over, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh And I'm not uh, saying that's not true either. I'm just saying what it is. Yeah, I mean I mean he's a he's a good receiver, but I, I got to Brian, you know, I d I, I didn't like it when they got put out. And yeah, it was blown out of proportion. But, you know, when you're on a losing team and everything's, you know, the wheels are almost coming up and then you have this come out, I, I didn't like it. I'm going to be honest with you, you know, but it is what it is, you know, just, you know, maybe to be honest with you, he's sitting there looking at the other side of the field and this wide receiver that they drafted, number two, he's he's taking his snaps and he's looking damn good doing it. And, and mm-hmm. don't think that that didn't play into it. You know, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm with you, but to be to be fair, Saints fans need to know those are two completely different types of wide receiver, and you know yeah. that because you watch film. Yeah. One's a split end, one's a flanker. I mean, they're, they're not even comparable. Yeah, it might make him frustrated because the guy's getting a lot of targets, but it's not like he's stealing the routes that Cooks usually ran. Cooks was never the run a slot or run a, a seam over the middle route because he's, as Brian so eloquently put it, the guy's barely taller and bigger than Tommy Lee Lewis. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a good comment. But yeah, yeah, I understand that. But you know, yeah, the skill sets are completely different. You know, but it, it, it's still, you know, I, I just, I'm just you know, saying. I'm not even calling y'all wrong. I'm just saying it's ridiculous the amount of coverage and talk that we're getting, and that I feel we're blowing this so far out of proportion from what it really is. Because this is the first time in three years we've had this type of comment, and you can call it selfish, you can call it immature. I'm not even saying that's not true. I'm just saying the level that is being brought to is way too high. It's like the rent. It's too dang high. Yeah, well, you know, you know how fans are. You know, especially social media catches on fire, and it's going to run with fire. And it's just, it's just the way it is today, you know. Uh, and and he should know that too, you know. When he put that out, he should know that, you know. If it's just a business. Well, you put it out there, and the fire is going to come. So if you want to put it out there, get ready for it to come back at you, and it has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely has. Okay, I know my man Rand is a fat guy, so I'm gonna start off with this before I, before I get into my rant. Let me just use a few stats. Now it's been said. Brandon Cook, you know, the whole thing comes down to, and, and I agree with you on this point, Rev, maybe it's very possible that for such an emotional win that meant a lot to everybody in that locker room to contribute and give Sean Payton that win over Greg Williams. Maybe, just maybe, Brandon Cook was feeling some way inside because he didn't get a chance to help his coach, you know, to end on that emotional victory. Now, what he did was draw a lot of double, double coverages, Sometimes triple coverage, you know, he got the guys underneath open, and he maybe he doesn't see it that way. But the idea that he, he for him to come out as if he has not been targeted bothers me, and that's why I get so irate at folks simply because how many games have the Saints played this year? Anybody want to say yes? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? How many? <laughs> how, how many games have they played this year? Do you know how many Thirteen. times Brandon Cooks has been targeted? Eight plus times in the game. Eight plus times in the game this year. How many times has he been targeted? Eight. He's been targeted out of those games. Eight times. Eight times. In 13 games, he's been targeted eight or more times. Do you know how many wins that's contributed to? One. 
seven games in which Brandon Cook had at least eight targets. The Saints have only the Saints have lost those seven. They've only won one out of the eight. That was against Carolina. 